Hello and welcome again to Four Fives Design. It's Jay here with the third in this five part serial of how to make a realistic rose looking something like this. Today I'm going to show you how to make the sepals of the rose. I'm going to take you from a very basic sepal to one like this with slightly embellished edges to the elements of the, pet, of the sepal that when assembled will give your crocheted rose a very realistic look. To crochet the sepals of the rose, it, we're going to do this in two stages. Um, as you can see, it's got um, a slight bulbous element to it, if you can see that there. I don't know whether that's the better um, definition for you to see. It has a little bulbous element in the middle and then five different sepal elements. We'll do each one of these sepal elements individually, starting at the base and then casting off and then moving around and doing the next one, doing the same thing, sepal element, cast off and then move round. It might sound a bit of a faff, but once you get that swing of it, it's really quite straightforward. You'll notice that there is a hole in the centre of this sepal. There is a good reason for that because when you come to assemble the rows, you want to be able to have a sufficiently large hole in the middle of that sepal for your rose stem to go through. So there's no point in doing a magic circle for this because the whole point of a magic circle or magic ring is to close up a gap so you've got a nice neat start to any of your projects. But for this sepal, we do actually want a hole in the middle. So all I'm going to do is a chain start, chain, join together with a slip stitch and then we're going to work this little section inside that hole. So I'll just show you here, I'm using this super chunky wool again, obviously not the colour for a sepal, um, but I think it's good for demonstration purposes. So I've just done a chain joined by a slip stitch and here I've just done a chain of seven stitches because um, that, that seems to give me sufficient um, length in order to get the number of stitches that I need in the middle of that um, piece of crochet. However, because we've got five sepal elements, any stitches that we do now to form that centre bit needs to be in multiples of five. So what I'm going to do is 15 half trebles worked into that centre circle, then each one of those sepal elements will be based on three stitches to start with. It will all become clear as we go through, so don't worry about that. So in order to start this first round, I'm going to do a chain two, and then start to do 15 half trebles, or 15 half double crochets, if it's the US terminology, into that centre circle. So there's the first one. I'll do the second one for you there now. And I'll just do one more. So do it as you would do a normal half treble. Yarn over into that centre circle instead of going into a stitch grab your yarn and then complete your half treble. You'll notice that while I was doing that, this is the tail end of the yarn, I've incorporated that into my crochet. This is purely just so that I can snip that off without worrying about fastening it off particularly. So I'm going to continue now working around this until I've got 15 half treble crochets worked into that inner circle and I'll see you for the next stage. To crochet the sepals of the rose, it, we're gonna do this in two stages. 
Um, as you can see, it's got um, a slight bulbous element to it, if you can see that there. I don't know whether that's the better um, definition for you to see. It has a little bulbous element in the middle and then five different sepal elements. We'll do each one of these sepal elements individually, starting at the base and then casting off and then moving around and doing the next one, doing the same thing, sepal element, cast off and then move round. It might sound a bit of a faff, but once you get that swing of it, it's really quite straightforward. You'll notice that there is a hole in the centre of this sepal. There is a good reason for that, because when you come to assemble your rows, you want to be able to have a sufficiently large hole in the middle of that sepal for your rose stem to go through. So there's no point in doing a magic circle for this because the whole point of a magic circle or magic ring is to close up a gap so you've got a nice neat start to any of your projects. But for this sepal, we do actually want a hole in the middle. So all I'm going to do is a chain, start, chain, join together with a slip stitch, and then we're going to work this little section inside that hole. So I'll just show you here. I'm using this super chunky wool again, obviously not the colour for a sepal. Um, but I think it's good for demonstration purposes. So I've just done a chain joined by a slip stitch. And here I've just done a chain of seven stitches because um, that, that seems to give me sufficient um, length in order to get the number of stitches that I need in the middle of that um, piece of crochet. However, because we've got five sepal elements, any stitches that we do now to form that centre bit needs to be in multiples of five. So what I'm going to do is 15 half trebles worked into that centre circle. Then each one of those sepal elements will be based on three stitches to start with. It will all become clear as we go through. So don't worry about that. So in order to start this first round, I'm going to do a chain two and then start to do 15 half trebles or 15 half double crochets, if it's the US terminology, into that centre circle. So there's the first one. I'll do the second one for you there now. Now I'll just do one more. So do it as you would do a normal half treble, yarn over into that centre circle instead of going into a stitch, grab your yarn and then complete your half treble. You'll notice that while I was doing that, this is the tail end of the yarn, I've incorporated that into my crochet. This is purely just so that I can snip that off without worrying about fastening it off particularly. So I'm going to continue now working around this until I've got 15 half treble crochets worked into that inner circle. And I'll see you for the next stage. So I've now done 15 half trebles into that centre circle. And I just need to complete this round now by joining um, this last stitch to the first stitch we did. Remember we did a chain two to begin with, so ignore that chain two because that's really the basis of that first stitch. So ignore that chain two and do a slip stitch then into that third chain along. And that completes that first round. Now we're going to do the same again, doing two more rows on the same basis. Start with a chain two, this time you're going to go into the stitches themselves with your half trebles. So you follow that round of stitches with your half trebles. So one half treble into each of those stitches that you've just made. So you've got another 15 half trebles to make that second round. 
and again I'll join you in. So I've just done my second row of 15 half trebles and as we did originally I'm going to join those two together with a slip stitch so you ignore the first two chains that you did and join the, this row together by going into that third stitch along. And as you can see already, just after two rows, you've got like a little bowl. This is obviously oversized um, because I'm using this super chunky wool, but that just shows you how quickly you can get the shape that you need. Now, that is inside out. So this stage, just turn that little bowl inside out. That gives you the, the better pattern that you need. Not that it's particularly um, of concern, the, the pattern that you see, but that's the way it should go. And then all you do now is one more round, exactly the same. Do two chains to begin with, and then do one half treble into each of those 15 stitches. So you'll end up with quite a little bowl that will form the basis of your sepal and is the first of the sepal elements. So again, I'll complete this and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I've come to the end of my third round. So I'm now going to join those the, the two um, ends of this round together, ignoring the first two chains that we did as we've done before and go into that third stitch to join that together. So I've now got 15 stitches and a lovely little crochet bowl. Now to do the sepals then, I mentioned we've got five sepal, separate sepal elements. We've got 15 stitches. So we're going to be working now in the first three stitches here for the base of that second sepal element. As we've done before, start with a chain two and then that's the chain, we, that's the stitch we joined together, so ignore that one. We're going to go into that first stitch there. We're going to work in treble crochet stitches now, or double crochets in US terminology. And we're going to do a treble crochet increase in those first three stitches. So treble crochet increase just means doing two treble crochets in each of those stitches. So that's the first stitch with two in. Do two trebles into that next stitch. And another two trebles into that third stitch. So we've worked in three stitches, we've done two trebles in each, so big surprise, we should now have six stitches here. So that's your chain two, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, marvellous. Chain two, and then turn your crochet around and we're now going to work along that row there. And I just need to let my dog in who's scratching at the door so I'll be with you in a second. Okay, so I've picked this up now where I've just got two more stitches left to work. So I will do the double crochet, uh, the treble crochet decrease into both of those stitches. So we've now just got that one stitch left at the top. And in order to neaten it off, I'm just gonna do a chain two and do one final treble crochet. Can you see it in that final stitch at the top? And then to finish that off, I'm going to chain two and then snip my yarn and pull that through to finish it off. Now, as you can see, we've got a little bit of a tail there. 
I'm going to snip that off so that I've still got a little section at the end to give that little bit more authentic sepal shape. Just going to zoom out, uh, in, out a little bit now so you can see. I know this is very oversized, um, but I'll show you the real sized one that I've done. You can see that middle section, the tapered sepal, and that little tail at the end. And I'll show you what we do with that shortly. So that's the first of those sepal elements. So we've got that bulbous bit, we've got the first sep sepal element. So what we need to do now is to continue around here to do four more. And we work then the next one into these next three stitches. All we need to do for that is to cast on. And to do that, if you've not done the casting on before, go into that first stitch that we're going to be working with. Grab your yarn. Hook over. And then, as we always seem to do with these sepals, is do a chain two. So remember when we did this first one, we'd completed our rows of this bulbous bit here and then started off with a chain two here. So all we've done is the same thing there, but just cast on in order to do that. I'm just going to move that little tail out of the way. And the same principle as when we did that hole at the bottom, you can for the next section, if you wish, and it saves you having to cast off in the end, is to just hold that in place and incorporate that into the next stitches that we do. So once having casted on then, all we do now is what we did previously. And we're going to be working in the next three stitches. So now we've done our chain two, and we've got the little tail of the yarn there. We're going to work this time in that stitch that we've just done to cast on, because we've carefully counted our stitches out, and we've got 15. We've just used three, so we need to make sure we've got sufficient left to do the rest of the sepals. So I'm going to do two treble crochets in that first stitch, as we did before, and the same in the next stitch along, two treble crochets, And the final stitch, another two treble crochets. So we've got our cast on chain two, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Just as we did with that first one, and we're going to continue doing exactly the same. So we do a chain two turn around and do one treble crochet increase in that first row to give us seven stitches, two chains at the end and do one row of, into each of those seven stitches. So the first three rows involves your treble crochet base two treble crochets into each of the three stitches. The second row, we increase the number of stitches by one. The third row, we just do um, treble crochets in each of the seven stitches. And from the fourth row onwards, we do decreasing numbers of stitches using the treble crochet decrease technique for each row until we run out of stitches. You continue to do that for all the way around 
until you end up with your completed sepal, like we've got here, with five separate elements to it and the, sec and the base. Now, as you can see with this one that I've completed, this is using that um, lace weight yarn, so it's very fine, but it is fantastic for using for these um, roses. Once you've completed it, this particularly, it's quite wrinkled and wiggly. Now, if you were going to be doing a rose that was the end of its day, then this may well be okay to leave it as it is. <clears throat> However, I've found that um, in order to get a better look for your rose, particularly if you're doing a rosebud, in which case you'd be using the sepal um, and it would be on display more so than any other rose that you're going to do. I find it better to treat these um, and I use a little bit of spray starch. Um, so just a normal spray starch that you can get for you doing your laundry. Give them a little squirt of spray starch and iron them flat. So that was the one that sort of um, I did first. And this is what it looks like once you've starched it and ironed it. I don't iron that bit in the middle because I still want to keep that bulbous element because that's what it, um, makes it quite realistic. Um, but then it's far easier then to work with that. You can see the difference from that little wrinkled effort to what looks like a nice refined star shape. Now the only thing you can see perhaps with this, because of this particular yarn, and you may find it with the yarn that you use, um, I left that little tail on and, and snip, just snipped it off and left that little tail and you can see, if I hold it closely, that it's got two little strands to it. Um, that's because I've used, for this particular sepal, I've used two different um, wool, two different yarns together, so I get that lovely sort of mottled shape to the leaf. Now I've used a technique before where in order to finish off those sepals, I've melted um, a green coloured um, candle and then dipped the ends of those sepals in the melted wax. Now that works reasonably well, except um, the wax doesn't always dry as um, smoothly as I would want it to. So I've, and please feel free to try that, um, it does work um, reasonably well. Um, what I have now started to do is um, a separate technique that I've discovered works really well. Um, I've when I've been um, using, when I started off doing the petals, I use these little um, cake making powders to add a bit of colour and definition to the petals. And also did that for the leaves that I did originally. So what, and what I've found is if I use these powders, up for this, what I'm going to show you now, I've mixed these two, a little bit of each of these together. Um, just mixed it together in a little bowl. I guess you could do this with acrylic paint, um, just the same. And what I'm going to do now is to just add a little blob of standard PVA glue to that mix and use that to shape the sepals. So if you can see there, have you mixed those two powders together? So if you can see there, have you mixed those two powders together? I've just added a blob of normal basic bog standard PVA glue and I'm just going to mix that powder into the glue. So I'm basically gluing the end of the sepal, but I've added colour to it. So it'll just finish it off nicely. So once I've done that, what I'm going to do, I can show you down here. I'm 
and that sticky glue bit. There's my end of the sepal. I'm just going to cover each one of those with a little bit of the coloured glue. And this is similar to what you do with melted the melted wax, just to finish that those ends off. But try it for yourself, because uh, the melted wax um, is great, except that I've found with the wax it was harder, it sometimes dried quite pale, and it was harder then to um, just shape these like I'm doing now, just to get that final um, pointy end to the sepal. This little detail, you don't have to, you, could, you don't have to use a tail, you could just do chain two and cast off. But I think if you're trying to get the most realistic looking rose possible, then these little extra touches just make all the difference. So there we are, I'll just zoom back out, get rid of that. So as you can see now, it's created a really quite re nicely realistic sepal with that particular finish on. So I'm just going to let that dry now and then move on to the next tutorial. I'm going to run you through some of the yarns, where I got them from and I'll include a link in the description. So if you're interested in buying from those particular producers, you can have a look for yourself. And just full disclosure, I'm not affiliated to anybody, I'm just telling you genuinely the yarns that I've found that I love to work with. This particular yarn here I absolutely love because of the colours that are in it. It's from a company called Bellica Yarns and this is a combination of merino um, wool and nylon and it's in full ply fingering later yarn weight. I have done a rose out of that just for fun, um, just to see how it would look. I absolutely loved working with it. Can you see those tiny little stitches and all the different colours? It was absolutely wonderful to work with. And another yarn that, that I've enjoyed working with is this one here. It's from a company called um, Shreya Silk and it's 100% Mulberry Silk and this one's in White Pearl Rhododendron, that's the colour, it's three ply. And as you can see it's got some gorgeous shading within that. Um, and what I've, although I've done it a rose in that particular yarn, which I do love, I think that's a really cool effect. What I'm thinking of doing with it, I'm just working on this at the moment, is to make a rhododendron out of this. So if you're watching or will watch the tutorial on how to make a sepal of a rose, I've used the same principle here to make this sort of a shape. Um, looking at rhododendrons, they've probably got four little elements to um, their petals, um, but it seems to work okay with three. And I think the idea that I've got is to make a few of these probably three each in little bundles and then join them together to make a hydrangea. So when that's finished, I'll post a video of that so you can see what it looks like. I'll just show you this. If you haven't watched the um, basics video, then I just wanted to mention this particular yarn. This is 100% sari silk and it comes in some absolutely wonderful colours. I've got some um, pink as well as that orange there. Um, I've just used it so far for some very basic crochet and that's just a chain of that particular yarn and you can make it into little flowers or um, key rings. But the colours are absolutely gorgeous. I just like it as it is in that ball. I think it looks really cool. So the rest of the wool or the yarn that I've got here is from Watercolours and Lace. Where they use silk, um, that to me produces the finest, the most wonderful yarn 
ever. These two over here are Shetland wool and this one's lace and it's Shetland cobweb lace with yarn. That means it's really, really fine. I think if I'm right in thinking that the idea is if you crocheted or knit a, a shawl in this particular yarn, once you've done so, that shawl, that shawl would be able to pass through a wedding ring. It's so, so fine. It's absolutely wonderful. Yes, and, the, and this is the same, Sh Shetland cobweb lace, 100% um, Shetland wool, and it is bitter chocolate truffle, that one. And this one here is Shady Forest. As you can see, it's £11 for each of those. But those use either on their own, single strand or double strand, or mixed together, one of those each creates a gorgeous, gorgeous finish, particularly for these rose leaves. Watercolours and lace also do this mulberry silk lace yarn. I'll just show you that there. Unfortunately, I've lost the tags for these. That's why I've had to write them out myself. So that's a lesson to me. Note to self, keep your tags, keep your labels so that you know what you've had in the past. But look at the different colours in there. It's 100% mulberry silk. Mulberry silk is the finest quality silk available. And at Watercolours and Lace, they hand dye the yarns. So you get this gorgeous, subtle variation in the shading. This is another favourite of mine. This is fine silk lace yarn in Golden Sunset. Just look at the colours of that. Absolutely gorgeous. I love um, roses out of that. Here's a little tiny rose I just made just for fun. Not a normal sized one, just a tiny version of it. But that's using that particular shade. Then this one here, it's the same yarn. The colour here is Hyacinth in Blue. And you can see why it's called that absolutely gorgeous shade. And I've used that again just for fun to make um, some little roses. Here's some that I've done earlier. This one here, watercolours and lace, mulberry silk lace again in lovely lilac. And that's a fantastic name for it because it just describes perfectly what it is. I know I'm zooming in there. I hope you can see it. This is so soft to work with. It's just a pleasure. It really is. Of all the tips and tricks and techniques I've shown you in this video series, for me, getting the yarn that you love is probably the best thing possible. And again, I'm not affiliated with this company at all, but I've definitely found watercolours and lace to produce some of the finest yarn going. Here's another one of those mulberry silk lace yarns, and this one's in green velvet. Again, another gorgeous colour. I have got so little left of the other coloured yarns in this series that I've got little to show you. But the two that I've used for um, the roses that um, I've been doing during this tutorial, I had as, as a custom order. So I'd seen um, a rose that I liked in a local... Um, food chain shop, Marks and Spencers, for those of you that know Marks and Spencers, they produce this wonderful rose bouquets. And I sent them a picture of that rose and said, could you do me some fine silk lace, 100% silk um, yarn to match those colours? And, and they did. So this is a custom order that they've done specifically for me. It is 100% mulberry silk, so it's again, it's that gorgeous. You can't get finer than mulberry silk, 100% silk. And it's in a very light lace weight yarn. So the measurements for this is between 1,000 and 1,600 meters per 100 grams. So that's how fine it is. So that's the green that I've used for the petals. And again, this custom order the pink that they've produced for me in this 100% mulberry silk, that very, very fine yarn. And you can see, you can't just describe that as pink. It, 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 it would be a travesty if that's all you said, because look at all the individual shading within that. And to just add to the glory of it, when it comes, it's wrapped in tissue paper 
with a, a ribbon around it which matches the colour of the yarn and it smells lovely. I don't know what they do to it, but it smells lovely. As you can see, I've been using all sorts of recycled tins and bottles and even here's some old wool that I didn't like particularly to wrap my yarn around it because it comes in, in skeins like this and you have to wind that yourself. I have treated myself to a hand spinner, um, is that what you call it? Something that winds yarn for you. So it, that produces a lovely ball of yarn like this in a fraction of the time. It probably takes me a good 50 to 60 minutes to wind a skein of wool like that and you do it in about five to seven minutes using the little yarn um, winder. So there we are, just thought I'd throw that in for you. Um, have a look around, there's some gorgeous um, products available and they really do make the difference between um, a product that you would sell perhaps at a local school fete and one that you would want to give to your best friend on their wedding day.